Hello, Lake Grove family. I'm Mark Hanscom, your Director of Community Hospitality. Today we will consider the story of Jonah. It's number 236 in the Children's Bible in 365 stories. You know, the story is very familiar to many, and it's the subject of many children's stories and songs, like this one that we used in Lake Grove Kids this week. Who did, who did, who did, who did, who did swallow Joe, 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 Joe? Who did swallow Jonah down? You'll remember that God asked Jonah to go and preach to the Ninevites. They were the sworn enemies of Israel, and they were living lives of thievery, violence, and sexual immorality. And Jonah didn't want to go. So he went the other direction and bought a ticket on a boat heading for Tarshish, hoping that he could escape God's attention and God's command. Once on board the ship, the weather turned nasty and the sailors feared for their lives. And Jonah told them, you can solve this problem by throwing me overboard. And they did. Immediately the seas calmed, but Jonah was drowning. God in his mercy sent a giant fish to swallow Jonah. And he lived for three days and three nights in the belly of this fish. And while he was there, he prayed to God. He worshipped him and he thanked him for saving him. Then God had the fish vomit Jonah up onto the beach. And he asked him again to go to Nineveh and preach. And this time, Jonah did just that. Marching straight into Nineveh, he told them that they must change their evil ways or their city would surely be destroyed. And lo and behold, they believed him. Every person, even the king, repented. God was pleased and he saved them. His purposes had been fulfilled, and he was delighted. But Jonah was furious. And it's with his anger that we can consider several questions for applications to our lives. And today, I'm going to talk about two of them. First, God's love and saving grace is for all people, not just good people or people like us. The Ninevites were despicable and they were dangerous, threatening enemies of the Israelites. But God wanted to save them because he is the God of all people. Jonah knew this and he said, I know you're a good and gracious God and that you love all people and that you're patient. He suspected God would show his love for the Ninevites, and he was right. God loved them. His saving grace is for all people. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And we know by love, he doesn't mean that warm, mushy feeling we sometimes feel inside. He means love as an action. He means love as a verb. He means to do love. Well, Jonah did not want to do love in Nineveh. He thought the Ninevites should get what they deserved. And when God saved them, he was filled with self-righteous anger. Don't we feel the same way when we consider people that we don't like? Jesus said, love your neighbor. And I only wish by that he meant our neighbor, our neighbors, Katie and Adam, and their two spunky sons. We like them so much, and we have a lot in common with them. And so they are easy to love. But God gives us this story of Jonah and says, I know it's really hard to love the Ninevites, but I am the God of all people. Do as I do. I want you to become more and more like me. 
And so we must wrestle with this challenge. So the first question for us to consider in light of this story of Jonah is, what does it mean to love your neighbor in light of the Ninevites? Secondly, we are all closet Ninevites. We have all been despicable. We certainly have not earned the title God's chosen people. Hardly. We don't deserve to be loved by someone who is pure and holy. And upon self-reflection, we find greed and selfishness and fear. And we wonder, how is it possible that God, who knows everything about us, could love us and invite us into community with him. Through Jonah and the Ninevites, God reveals that he loves each and every one of us, no matter who we are or what we've done. The Ninevites were beyond horrible, but even they could not escape God's love. He wanted them back. And this is good news for all of us no matter who we are or what we've done, God loves us. We're never lost. We belong to God, and he cares for us and is seeking us. And so the second question for us to ponder in light of this story of Jonah is how do we respond? to the amazing truth that God loves even Ninevites. Jonah had a very difficult time comprehending this truth, but he was at a great disadvantage because he didn't know the gospel. As for us, the day after tomorrow, we will read story 238, The Promised King, and we will learn more about God's